Congressman, I want to ask you about a recent vote that you took that is getting criticism for, for you and was a little controversial. Um, this is a banking measure. And it seemed to your critics that you were uh, aligning yourself with some of the conservative um, House Republicans and that it was chipping away at the protections that Dodd-Frank had given to consumers in the too-big-to-fail banking era, era and that you seem to be backpedaling on those protections. Can you just explain to us in layman's terms why you took this vote? Yeah, sure. I mean, first of all, it was a it was a bill that passed last uh, week in the House. It had very, you say, conservative Republicans. It got 67 votes in the Senate. Nothing gets 67 votes in the Senate, right, including the votes of 17 Democrats, including the vote of former vice presidential candidate Tim Kaine uh, of Virginia. So it was hardly a bill just of conservative Republicans. But substantively, it was aimed at fixing something that many of us have been concerned about in Dodd-Frank, which is Dodd-Frank appropriately you know, and I helped write Dodd-Frank uh, a long time ago, uh, appropriately put um, very significant restrictions on our banking industry. The problem, of course, is that many of these restrictions don't really apply to smaller institutions. These are our credit unions and small banks on our main streets. Um, and, you know, whereas Citibank or J.P. Morgan can hire 40 or 50 lawyers to deal with a new regulation, the smaller banks in many instances can't. And if you listen to the small banks, as I do, because they're terribly important to our communities, they will tell you, hey, there's a lot of stuff here that just doesn't make any sense. Now, this bill did, uh, when you say chip away, this bill did, in fact, lighten some of the regulation on those small and community banks. And look, I understand, I've been watching this for a long time, it's very important to the Democratic Party and to other to say every time there's a modification proposed for Dodd-Frank to call it a Wall Street giveaway and a rollback. Well, because just to be clear, I mean, just, to, just so that we all understand it, it did lift the asset threshold. And so doesn't that make more banks too big to fail? Well, no, what you're referring to, Allison, was something that I actually was pretty ambivalent about. And, you know, you don't ever like everything in a bill. And I'm not here to tell you the bill was absolutely perfect. I'm here to tell you that it raised a lot of the regulation that was on our smaller bank. But what you're referring to is the fact that we used to define a systemically important institution, that is to say institutions that, if they went down, could cause a real problem for the system, at $50 billion in assets. That's too low. I happen to think that 250, 250 billion is probably too high, but again, you don't get 100% bills, you don't get perfect bills. And at 250 billion, we're talking about institutions like SunTrust, like American Express, institutions that you never heard of in 2008. This was not Bear Stearns, you know, this was not um, uh, AIG. Um, so yeah, uh, it did have one or two elements in it that, um, that affected some of our more medium-sized banks, but again, you know, in any piece of regulation, you need to be open-minded about the fact that good regulation is balanced, and it shouldn't become a religious war between those people who want to repeal Dodd-Frank and those people who say you can't touch a single word of Dodd-Frank or any other piece of legislation or regulation. So this, in my mind, was a, was a fair and very strongly bipartisan in both the House and the Senate attempt to relieve some of the pressure on our smaller community banks and